going to start off here with Scotland taking on South Africa. We're underway. 40 minutes on that match clock. It will be 30 seconds a shot for the first half an hour, and then we're down to 15 seconds. With all the fun of the fair, the Golden Breaks, the Golden Ducks, potential six red shootouts and all of that. And joining me on commentary is a man safely through to the quarterfinals of the event as England are seeded through. Carl Sutton, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Simon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you, I know you were here this afternoon or earlier on this morning watching the women play. That was a huge amount of fun. Yes, yeah. Um, if anybody has not seen that game, I highly suggest going back and uh, watching it. It is without doubt the, the best women's match I've ever watched. Uh, Morocco in, taking in on the French. Morocco were unbelievably good in that match, but the atmosphere was very special as well. I'm expecting more of the same from um, from this South African team as well. With um, Salo, he was, for me, one of the highlights of the World Championships last year. Yeah, and, no doubt um, about you it. You know he's going to be very vocal uh, in this match as well. Especially if South Africa get a roll going and they're in with a chance here in the opening frame. This is Nadu. But immediately noticeable, and we saw it with the women this afternoon or this morning, very easy, immediately noticeable how quick they play in terms of when you're not used to 30 seconds a shot, you almost go too quick at times. He's actually naturally that quick. That he, I've, I've seen him play in a team of Well, he's been week. playing brilliantly this week as well. Yes, yeah. Um, he is actually naturally that quick. Um, but I think I think Fraser's been struggling this week a little bit. I see he, he wrote on social media that he's sort of not happy with his game. And I think a lot of the time when it's in your head that you're not playing well, I think it's, um, oh. it's then a bit difficult to kind of turn that around in the same event. It doesn't help when you go out in this sort of environment as well. No, I think he's left an angle here to, to go into again. Oh, he's flicked it out. Needs to pull up. Well, I guess it still goes right centre, yeah, so he's, he's good here. He's going to be crashing again, I think, unless he can miss the red on the rail and go into the air. <laughs> I know he's naturally quick, but this feels quicker than normal to me. He's got to get into the white ball here. Oh, he's OK. To this squeeze good. in, this is tight. He's already tried to squeeze one past and fails. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> what a start we've had here. <laughs> they do with an unbelievable finish to get South Africa off to the flying start. Do we know who the nominated players are for the shootout? I'm, we I'm do. I'm assuming for South Africa it's um, Jeremiah who just played. Yeah, and Cello Dick is the secondary. Yes, and for Scotland, uh, Rab Davidson has the primary. Okay, and Fraser has the the secondary. Oh, Fraser's going in. It only comes into the primary and secondary if it finishes as a seven-all tie. Any other ties, and it is mm. the primary and the next player on. Yeah, I think that you're very unlikely to have a, a, a seven-all with only 40 minutes on the clock. The, the frames would have to go super quick. Senegal team there um, you can just see behind the, um, the South Africans they've sort of been bonding this week obviously the both from the same continent um, both been cheering for one another so it's, it's good to see really yeah, and they're new this year as well yeah and they'll be in action next as well they're taking on Northern Ireland yeah they've, a they've actually got one of their players is actually really good he um, he beat Gary Carr in the in the in the singles competition. Gary's a good player, um, and he's naturally very quick. Also, he yeah, came from behind in that match as well. Uh, yes, he, he played on the table next to me. So it's all about this shot. I mean, he'd like to sort of, I guess, track the white towards the the red closest to the bottom cushion any sort of contact on that and you're going to expect he's going to be onto the yellow in the center oh maybe it didn't go and he's had to play the cannon but he's played it excellently that is very good perfect start for south africa here yeah and by contrast he's just going through this like a normal frame just staying in rhythm and 
This has been very good, very, very Back impressive. Between the two, the two reds here. Sort of where his hand is. There we go. Beautiful. What a finish from Jabavu. Makes it 2 0 South Africa very quickly indeed. I think it's good that we're in the quarterfinals and maybe no disrespect. I'd like to have played maybe one of the, the weaker nations just to sort of be out there, get a feel for it and get a win under our belt before going in um, going in tomorrow. Of course Sorry. you play the winner of this match as well. Right, okay. Yeah. On that it's on, on Sunday though, yeah. Yes. But yeah. yeah. But yeah, this is um that was uh, obviously it was brand new last year, but I think uh, what a great addition it is to the World Championships just to offer up something completely new. I think it's great that the ladies have their version this year as well. Um yeah, that's definitely something that I look forward to in these championships. Yeah, it really was embraced last year and one of the best days we've had on Ultimate Pool TV and <coughs> off to a brilliant start this year. Two-day event this time. But right, really good chance here for Scotland. One you feel they need to get on the board. Looks a little bit off angle here. because He's going to want to play the one next to the Reds next oh no he was fine i've been fooled by it all week yeah so. um but he, he's not landed a very good shape there i think i'd have rather have been high and used the cushion to go down towards the yellow now has he pushed the eight out does it still go he's now having a look If it doesn't, he's got to play back to the area, kind of where the cue ball is now, anywhere around there, to play it opposite. But it obviously does go. Has he got the whole pocket? <coughs> Doesn't look like the full pocket, but he's comfortable and he could have played on it top left, so must be. Ooh. He's pointing there. I'm not sure if he's got a bad contact or something. Just by his reaction, didn't seem like he did on the on our screen, but so now um, advantage Cello. Oh, but that's not good. That's not good because Scott has got a big target here. Any sort of contact on that eight. Yes, it's a big pocket. Yeah. It's not happy, but you should be thrilled to at least be in at the table with this chance. The ball at the bottom of the table plays quite big, I think, is why he's yes, giving us an extra yeah. bit of thought. I think we'll call, maybe call his extension. Looks like he's going one cushion with side. I thought he might go the other way and play like two cushions into it. Free kick. Didn't get enough side on. Pot it. And Sello wins the frame by only playing one shot. Sello Dick, and he's going to get his cr team and crowd going there. Asim Husson to get us back underway with the break for South Africa. Bit of a hammer as well, but it's gonna be dry. Scott Anderson with a chance for Scotland then. I mean, the Reds are okay, but. Decided to take the yellows. And you get the 30 seconds to work out what you want to do. He's called for an extra 15, one extension per frame. Reds it is then. It's <coughs> a little bit fiddly in places, this yeah, one. Yeah, I think he'd love to have been on that bottom ball um, from there. But, you know, if he can he play, does he have to play a cannon or can he just hold? Oh, I think that's a bad flick. Have to play up the table now. Nothing Asim can do. Just watch on. Hope to get to the table. Yeah, that's okay. He probably is on this bottom one, but I think he'll, he, he might take it. Or he might just decide to clear the two at the top. He's, he's on the one next to the eight. Yeah, that's a good shot. I like that. Oh, he's maybe a little bit too far, but still, no, that's fine, actually. 
Yeah, that was a clever shot just to knock the eight right over the pocket. Because then when he's um, when he's co coming from the, the bottom end, oh, he's, he's coming back down now. Yeah, I don't mind this route. If he gets to the, the bottom cushion. Sort of play now towards, I wouldn't try and get sort of straight on it or anything. Maybe like the blue spot. Oh, he quit on it. Um, yeah. This is what I, I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have tried to have been too clever there. I'm, maybe he's sort of. I don't know whether he's played up that side of the yellow or whether he has played for the centre of the table or not. I'm not sure. It definitely weren't the outcome he, um, he was looking for. And that's a big error. A couple of frames on the shot that Scotland looked like they were going to make the clearance and get themselves going and come up short just at the end. To um, to screw into this ball, or will he just uh, will he just play on it? I mean, I'll just play on it, but yeah, he's okay. Don't think he wanted to be there, but yeah, come back a lot further than yeah, he works. planned. We talked about it all week long. These cloths are very slick out there. Decided to play long. He might play to the side with cushion now and get that ball out of the way. Looks lovely. <laughs> he can't make his mind up. Extension. He's going to play this one and come back across for it. Breaks, knees breaks. Oh. Wow, what a mistake. Could that change things? Why is he running? <laughs> Scott Anderson runs round the table. Wants to save every second off this match clock he possibly can. <laughs> and Scotland are on the board. <laughs> Scott Anderson with the very quick two ball finish. I've not seen it, this guy before until this week, but he, he looks a decent player, this chap for Scotland. So... Certainly hit that break well. If you can see the red nearest the bottom corner pocket, then he'll very good chance. Oh, he wanted to be bottom left they definitely here. Um, Russian more than they need to. It's it's something we saw all morning long as well. Just the almost thinking that thirty seconds is quicker than it is. I think it probably worked for the, the Moroccan women's benefit. I mean, you see that their sort of statistics in the, the Women's World Championships, and I think they've struggled for wins. But then you look at that performance from this morning, and you'd be shocked that they've, it, it's they've not done better. It's amazing that they're not going to make the semifinals, the performances they put together. Mm. It's, it's quite incredible. You know, France ladies, they're, they're, a, they're, a, serious, um, they're a serious team in the ladies' game. And you know they can they can very easily win this whole event and Morocco has just turned them over like they were nothing they turned them over with some brilliant clearances along the way yeah. as well it was really high quality Yonk's going to get away with that. Yeah, it's a nice leave. He'll be playing off the, the right-hand side of this red, trying to um, get behind the other one. Always oh, played that hard. Really too hard, that was. I think the left hand one of the two yellows together at the top goes. That's whether he wants to go now or wait. Play up now. He's going to go. He, 
I don't think he's got all, all of the pocket. He might um, elect maybe to, to drop this one in. He might be able to hold hold behind them or even hit it thin and go into them. Wow. Let's push that red right over that corner pocket now. It's, it's half come out, but it's not really. Next shot could be key. I think the one, the other one that was flying round has gone. Oh no, he's playing safe. Don't go in off. Oh, he's left the red at the top. The Margin of error on that shot was tiny. That's a really good shot. I'll just play this pocket where you hit the rail halfway. Wow, there. that one really slid, and we've not yeah. seen that all week long. That really took it. Yeah. And we're back to one in it. Nathan Irvin makes it three frames to two. The momentum has definitely shifted. Very well, nearly made the cue ball. In the end, stays up and he has a chance. And first glance, this looks to be a very good chance. I think that the Yellows. Gap, yeah. yeah. I'm looking at, I wonder whether the yellow went in the middle. It probably doesn't. So it's I'm not there sure is if this is a natural in off. Oh, I think it was, but the pace he's played it, he's caught the jaw. Knowing glance from Craig to his corner. This one goes past uh, the red and the yellow. That's all about that gap. That looks, if he's he just on one it, turn more, I think he's fine. He wants to be able to get to the bottom of the if white If you can here. play that plant comfortably from where he is, I'll play that first, just so that he can get to it better on the cue ball. It looks hampered. Yeah, it looks very hampered here. Yeah, I don't like this because he has to, well, he has to screw back. Yeah. He's played it well. Good yeah. shot. Yeah. <laughs> Must say it's disappointing that the um, the South African ladies aren't here this year. Yeah, they've probably been an ever present in the in the championships ever since I've been coming for sure. And they would have been coming here with very high expectations of getting the title. Yeah, especially because um, no disrespect, but I, I think that the England team is um, weaker this year than what it has been. Uh, missing a few of their sort of regular players. I think that potentially they could have even come into it as favourites South Africa if they were here. But um, hopefully they'll be back next year. Red just about pulls up yeah, in time. Yeah, goes. Good visit this. Needed from South Africa this was. Stop the rot and... Uh, Go back to a two frame advantage. <laughs> Down it goes. Juan Mini with the clearance. Stops the rot. Two frames in it once again. David Charlton then with the next break. Gone for the cut break. I can see I can see a lot of people going for the cut break with the with the golden break in play. Yet to see one today. So far. This is the fourth match, of course. Are we going to see one in, to, well, this afternoon and tonight's sessions or a shootout? I think we're, sure going to see a see we're going to see a shootout. We'll see a golden break for sure. Almost selfishly, I'd like to see South Africa or maybe Senegal or Morocco have a golden break. I think the noise they would bring for it would be huge. Yeah. <laughs> 
Imagine if Cello gets one. Oh, can you imagine? To even it up, if, if Cello gets one, I'd like to see Scotland get one very next frame, just to keep it nice and even. So this is Bossman at the table. South Africa's final player. And this is the seventh frame. And a bit like the World Team Championships, which is played in well, many sessions of seven. The World Team Shootout is the same. 14 frame match, so each player can play twice. Has he stuck the red out? Has he stuck this out? Can he get through? closest to the right centre. That's good enough at this stage. This one could run the clock down quite a bit as well, which is at the moment to South Africa's advantage. But of course, if they were to lose it and only be one frame in it, not so big an advantage. That helps. That helps. You'd slow it down right now? Um, well... You're still in a bad spot, aren't you? Because the yellows have still got that ball closest to the left centre, which you can use to, to try and break out the eight. And eight. So, you know, it's really difficult to know what to do. I, I, well, he's got a chance to move it here. Nudge the yellow down towards yes, the, yeah. the eight ball. He, he definitely needs to get it away from that pocket because that is the obvious ball to um, always oh, missed. Mm. I think he has played to, to nudge it. Good opportunity now. The only bad ball on the table here for David it is the eight ball. Obvious breakout ball though. Might he be able to go straight into it now and hold on the one in the middle. No, he was going to be throwing too wide. He's got to be careful here. I mean, I'd rather if that. I'd rather play. I'd rather play the one in the top right now, and then the one bottom right and go into the black go go into the eight from behind knock it into the middle of the table yes sort of like that, like that. yes oh, yeah, yeah. yeah very good I, I, I didn't realize he had the angle yeah. from where he was that's why i suggested the pot the top because if it had gone from from the one in the middle there was every chance he could have blocked the one into the bottom left so um that was that was good thinking that was good thinking uh, i think he's got he might have to play a shot here he's really got a sort of Pace control. Uh, trying yeah. to pot it on the thick side just to control the cue ball. That brings the miss. So when the hard work was done, slightly loose error from David Jalton. Yeah, that was probably the, 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 the shot before maybe where he sort of ran too far and left himself too much angle, which has then made him want to pinch the pocket. But that doesn't look the greatest either, to be honest. Felt like he needed to get straight into left centre to get on the one on the left-hand side, and then he could get short position going. Yeah, he's, he's. I mean, he might still elect to play that ball, but it, it, which is now a tougher shot. You can play the one more into the middle of the table, but then you're going away from your work. Wonder if he could take it long or maybe throw it around three cushions. He's gonna no, he's going to go same. for the tougher pot. Oh, he's going oh. safe. Okay. okay, it's a little risky. The thing with that is I don't really see how he's not really going to get much gain because you don't expect... Um, oh, I was going to say you don't expect the foul, but he's got the foul. Not reach the cushion after contact, gives away cue ball in hand. Yeah, I didn't expect him to, um, to miss it going past. First and boss man now with a chance to get South Africa three frames well, in front. <laughs> maybe a little bit unnecessary, but um, why not <laughs> throw I, I, in the combo? Well, I guess where was where's he left the cue ball? If he he wasn't oh leaving yeah, anything he on. Left, he wasn't left it anyway. Yeah. I guess in his mind that takes away now the pressure away from the finish as well. See, and that's so he right gets the, it, he gets the benefit for yeah. playing the combination now. One minute away from 15 seconds a shot then. Oh, no. I think it's time for Bossman just to step up and roll these in. 
We are 40 seconds away from the 15 second clock. Do you still struggle with this sort of transition from the 30 to the 15? Does it catch you out the first couple of shots? Yeah, I don't think I'll ever be a fan of it. <laughs> I think, um, I'm not sure many are. No, I mean, for me, I can play quick on the shot. That's not an issue. My, I, I'm a thinker, though. Yeah. I, I don't see things quicker than what other players would. That's, that's the disadvantage for me. I think the one good thing that will happen here for both South Africa and Scotland is it's going to be a fresh player by the looks of things, starting at 15 seconds a shot. But it will be South Africa three in front when we get into that final 10 minutes. Yeah, they've lost about a minute there. Lost about a minute, which is and if critical Scotland for Scotland. Yeah, if Scotland realised that, I don't expect they'd be um, they'd be very happy. This chap is lightning. Oh. Look at this. Nadu is flying through this. <laughs> I mean, play fast by all means, but don't be reckless. I think that was an 18-second visit to the table for him. He's yeah, only was, got three balls left. I don't know if that was... You know, he could have, um, I mean, I don't get me wrong, he's not experienced at this sort of format. He could have just called extension there and just, even if he doesn't win this frame, he can kill quite a bit of time to try and protect the lead. But um, Scott Slope, one good positional shot away here from having an easy out for 5-3. Uh, for he looks, oh, that's... that's Flown. Right, you just want to see. I think he just needed to take a little bit of extra time there. Great That's a good shot. Mm, good shot, good shot. Brilliant stuff from Scott. And Scotland are back within two. Very quick. Counter clearance from Scott Anderson. And they still believe. And then I think the ref has wrapped the balls wrong. Yeah, that's um, that's a bit that's, that's, that's unfair on the Scottish. Really, they've probably lost a minute and a half on the clock over the last two frames. Yeah, and when there's only two frames in it, it's critical. South Africa are keeping their same order. Jabavu out there. And now he has a chance to win the frame. What a lovely opening shot. And he's the right man for the right time here for South Africa because he's not going to change his pace. He's going to go through this uh, a nice rhythm. He's not going to run around the table like they do. I think the clock's broken now because that was that was probably about 15 seconds. There was no beeps. Obviously on our screen that weren't counting down. That is now. Yeah, I don't think that was... Um, I don't think it was working on the last shot. But yeah, he's made a little bit of a mess of that. See, it's catching players out already who are just not experienced at it. That's all well and good being caught out the first time when you've got your extension, but um, when you haven't, you're just going to have to play a shot. Not a great chance here for Scotland. It is 5-3, remember. It's not 5-2, as the score says there. It is 5-3. Only two frames in it. Four minutes yeah. and change left, although we feel like it should be five minutes. Again, I, I think he sort of tried to push the boat out there when he didn't necessarily need to. I mean, when we got, what, we got four and a half minutes left on the clock, I think if you just win this frame in 
even two and a half minutes and just give the next guy two minutes. I think, you know, you're just giving yourself a chance. If you lose this frame, you've lost the match. So um, have to win the frame at all costs, yeah. even if you only leave a minute on the clock. Well, they're going to get another opportunity. Rab, you've got time. No shot. And a clearance he should make as well. By all means, go fast, but don't miss the finish. It will be South Africa to break if he makes this clearance. Every second he can shave off does help them, but you cannot miss the finish. He's played that nice. He's played that nice. He's going to have to play the other one. Just drop it in. Oh. Decides to go up and down. Oh, it needs to go. Oh, it's going to go. He's got the perfect pace on this. I think. Oh, it's just pulled up. Well, it does go top right, does it? Why is he? Uh, I don't get it. It did go in the middle. You could have cut that. He easily cut that in the middle. A strange decision there from Rab. I thought I was with you. I thought he was just going to drop it in, take it top left. Well, when he had the two left. Okay, I'm being told there is an extra minute and a half added to the clock there. So what we're seeing, which is 3.04, it was actually 4.30 at that point. So we're about a minute and a half on top of what the clock says here. Yeah, I think if the players would have known that, I'm not sure if they do. They do their players do know. So yeah. that's even, I don't know why they were rushing so much. Oh, oh wow, three. what a moment. A let Call off for extension. Scotland. Call your extension. And Scotland are back within one. There's a lot of people keeping track of what's going on here. We're asking the question about the clock, I think. Sello's having a look. Yeah, it's exactly what he's asking for here. need to know what it is. They do, though, yeah, because you need to know whether yeah. you want to run the clock down or not. It is critical. It's absolutely critical. I mean, if that was me out there, I would be saying, look, I need to see. I, it's imperative that you see the. Oh, the, the eight. Eight. He's got oh, the eight. He's got it. golden break for Cello Dick. And he hasn't realised. <laughs> he didn't know. <laughs> what a moment for South Africa. Now he knows. Uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> what? Scott Kennedy with the break. Oh, he's got it in motion. Oh, it's not going to go, though. He did get it moving. Just call your extension. Call your extension. 30 seconds off the clock straight away. Yeah, pot a couple of balls and you will win this match. There can only be a minute or so left. Remember, that clock on the screen is not correct. It's, it's done anyway. Scott's got nothing to go at. He wants the red. He wants the reds, but he can't. Call your extension you and just, sit in your seat. Yeah, just... Run the clock down, fold a couple of balls, call your extension, and you're going to win this match. It's been an entertaining game to get us started. It really has. And uh, we've got another six more games to come. Yeah, at 3 0, it felt like a little a bit of a slow burner because it felt like South Africa were going to run away with it. But credit to Scotland for really getting back into the match and taking it to them. But that moment from Solo Dick is going to be the final nail in the coffin. Yeah, I'm sure the Ultimate Pool um, social media team are already trying to get a clip of that one to, um, to post on the socials. I will imagine that is already on its way up. He was the star of the show last year and he's, he's on his way to being the star, star of this year's as well. That's going to be some buzz to play these boys tomorrow. Yeah, of course. South Africa will play England on Sunday in the World Team shootout. Barring Sunday, a miracle here. I'm being told, actually, there's still two minutes left, so we've been keeping a track on it. I've just been told in my ear, I guess there's just about enough time. 
So the, the men's one finishes Sunday? Sun, m both wet men's and women's finishes on Sunday. Oh, tomorrow is all, all about the Masters. The masters. Okay. So we, we'll be focusing on the Masters all day tomorrow. We'll get our first champion of the tournament tomorrow in both the men's and ladies' Masters. And, of course, the World Team Shootout men's and ladies will finish on Sunday. Tonight is all about making it through to the quarterfinals for all these teams where England, of course, already seeded through. Is that through the world rankings, that seeding? Yeah, it, I thought it was slightly strange because I felt Northern Ireland yes. as defending champions should be the seeds. Yeah, but I agree. But it's gone through on the, on the world rankings, which England are, are the top ranked team. Yeah, I think they should change that. I think that's only fair. Yeah. You know, d defending, we lost whatever we lost in quarters or the semis. I think it was the semis, wasn't it, to Northern Ireland? Yeah, so um, I don't see how we should get the, get the buy and, and they have to play around, but... Um, them decisions are out of my control, but that's that's my opinion anyway. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Oh, yes. right, Azim, with all the beeps going on in the background, it's just floating through these. This is probably up there with a record for the frames played. I'm right I'm up there. Azim Husson. Gets another one. South Africa are three in front. They are certain <laughs> of making it through to the quarterfinals of the World Team Shootout where they will take on England. One minute and four seconds left in the match. Three frames behind. It's too far to come back. I think this will be the first team possibly to win a match as well. Oh, no, I think someone did last year, didn't they? Yeah, I think so. There was a, there was a heavy... Oh, he's got, got it moving, but nothing doing... There we go. One, they're still counting down. There's about 40 seconds still to go here, but they're, they're counting down the clock. In fact, I think that is it. Some very much late confusion over the shot clock and the match clock there, but it is South Africa, quite rightly, that have got the victory here. Seven frames to four over Scotland, who put up a strong fight. But South Africa brought the noise and they brought the level on the table as well. Very eye-catching performance, including that Celodic golden break to seal it. Impressive stuff.